So let's go meet our first speaker for this session. It is Flavio Percoco, and the talk is Don't Try to Look Smart, Be Smart. So let's hear what he has to say. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, let's, let's do a little, like, very quick exercise since it's, we're, we just had food and we're probably just all falling asleep. So why do you, don't you all just like stand up right now? Just one second, just real quick experiment. Cool. I'm just going to ask some questions. Uh, don't raise your hand. It's not really useful for the camera. Just uh, clap if you agree or not. Um, of course, if it, this thing works. Um, OK, cool. Uh, so do you use Twitter? Yes. Just clap. <laughs> Are you subscribed to a mailing list? <laughs> cool. Do you like attending conferences? Have you liked this conference? Cool. Um, that's it. I'm Flavio. You can sit now. This is how I get my stand innovation without even um, <laughs> deserving one. Uh, so thank you all for that. Um, so I'm Flavio, or Flapper87, uh, and, and this um, thing that I believe is going to be successful called internet. Um, and this is don't look smart, uh, be smart. Um, what, I, what I would like to share is, you know, we live in a society, as you probably, uh, I asked, like, the questions that I asked are very, like, obvious and basic, and I guess, I don't know. Um, and, and, and something that you would expect for, from, you know, people working in this industry to, to do, right? Uh, well, not everyone has, uh, uses Twitter, which is uh, probably good for some people, <laughs> but, <laughs> Uh, but we're, most of us are subscribed to mailing lists and we, we like attending conferences because, well, you know, like, that's how we get in contact with other people. So, um, but we live, in like, we live in an era as where it is more and more evident. Um, it's, not, it's not really that it has changed. It's just become more evident that society, even in our own industry, is super important. And communities and the way we interact with other people, it is critical for our own um, growth and, and the success of our own industry. So, and as, as we get more and more involved with societies and communities, uh, we, we tend to learn some patterns and, and try to, we, we tend to change the way we interact with other people uh, based on what we believe is, is the right thing to do or based on what we believe is, is cool uh, because we want to be cool, right? We want people to, to just know that we are as cool as they are and we want all these famous um, members of the community of the entire industry to know that you know, we, we can be as cool as they are. Uh, so, well, let me tell you something. Um, fuck that, and every people, you know, that think that being cool is the right thing to do rather than doing the right thing, right? So, and this is this is what this talk is about. So, hear me out while I try to explain some of the points, and, and I run down through this. Um, that is me. Feel free to interrupt me at any time. Uh, thank you all for being here. Um, it is hard, especially after lunch. That is that is my Twitter handle. If you if you like the presentation. Um, I love feedback, so if you like the presentation, please uh, provide some feedback. That is my email address. Um, I, let me know what you think. Let me know if you would like to add something. Let me know if you have experiences like the ones that I'm probably going to, um, that, that I'm going to share and that are probably going to be useful for you as well. If you don't like the presentation, that is not my Twitter handler and that is not my email address. You can forget that I was here. I don't want to hear about it. Um, but no, just uh, kidding. I, I do want to know, if you don't like the presentation, let me know why. Uh, because that's, that is the only way we can actually grow together, right? Uh, if I say something that you disagree with, um, I want to know. And especially I want to know why you disagree with that. Because that is how I'm going to learn about your use case. That's how I'm going to learn about what you think and how diverse our community is, how diverse our industry is. Um, it is critical. Just a couple of more disclaimers before I get to the content. I tend to speak very fast. Um, if there's something that I'm saying that doesn't make any sense, feel free to interrupt me. I say, there's a parental advisory explicit content <laughs> tag there. You've been warned. Uh, I, I tend to drop many F-bombs in my talks. Uh, nothing personal. I just get too excited when, I, when I'm um, talking about stuff. Especially when I'm doing a ranty festival, which is basically what this talk is about. I'm just going to rant about stuff. I'm going to rant about our industry. I'm going to rant about stuff that will live 
every day as engineers and as members of, of these communities and, and, you know, and all the stuff that we do um, in a daily basis. And Mark Twain said once, um, every generalization is false, including this one. I just adapted that phrase, and every generalization is false, including the ones that I'm gonna make in this presentation. So if I, if I generalize on some topics, it's probably false, but just bear with me while I'm, I'm doing that because I'm trying to, um, to make a point. So uh, Gil Deleuze said once, technology uh, is social before it is technical. And when I read this, it actually stuck with me. And uh, I've been basically using this, this statement in most of my talks lately uh, when I talk about communities and when I talk about society. Um, it cannot, I mean, it cannot be any more true than this. Um, we, we probably didn't notice this in the past because, well, internet was not there. But even then, society and the social interactions between um, different members of our community were um, critical for the growth of our own projects, right? So if you have a project and you want it to grow, you kind of want to, if there's no community behind your project, there's basically no project. Like you, can, you, can, you can move it forward yourself for your own purposes and your own um, goals. But if, if there's no community behind it, it is, it's really hard to actually make it a successful project, you know, going beyond your, your own limits and the, own, the stuff that you're working on. So society is critical for, for communities, uh, not for communities, for your project and, and for technology as well. So keep this in mind while, while we go through the different points that, uh, that we're gonna make. Um, actually, you know, you know what? Um, screw the slides. I'm, I'm not even gonna use the slides. I'm just gonna, I, I want to talk to you. I wanna, I wanna know what you think about all, all the points I'm gonna uh, try to uh, go through. Um, because I, I don't want you to be all distracted about all the, all the slides that I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be showing. But, so we're gonna start making some points uh, about my own interactions with uh, online societies. Because this is where our societies are at. We, we work in an industry, we, 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 we interact with an industry that is mostly based online. Right? Most of us, even if we go to an office, uh, projects that we use, libraries that we use, they're mostly, you know, they're, they're, they come from some, um, some source that we call internet, and many people have worked on those, right? So our communities are mostly based online, and we want to, we want to be part of those communities. Every day, like when I, when I wake up, the first thing I do is, you know, like just pick up my phone, and it's like, let's check what the heck has happened on Twitter. Um, you know, you never know when you're gonna wake up and someone has bumped on other countries, and like today. And, but you wanna know, you wanna know what's going on online because you wanna be part of that community. So I guess one of the first questions that you gotta ask yourself is that how important it is for me to be part of that specific community? How important it is for me to be, um, to be known in this specific community? I might, if you are a consumer of a library, if you are a consumer of a project, or just a consumer of some information that's being produced in a different community, is that enough for you to actually move forward with your project, or is there something else that you need from that community? Because the whole point here is like, the time that you spend online, the time that you spend talking to other people online, is time that you're not using for something else, right? So you wanna be very smart and very conscious about how you use your time, um, because like even, even attending conferences, we, like, we love attending conferences. I attend many conferences in a year. But every time I pick up a conference, I'm always asking myself, even like, it goes beyond budget. It goes beyond, you know, like, do I have enough money to, to you know, go to this conference and pay for this? It, it is, you know, am I making a good use of my time? And is attending this conference, is some, it's gonna give me something that I'm, you know, like, I can use for myself or I can use for, for the projects that I'm working on. And what I'm trying to say is that I'm not trying to say that you should be selfish um, with your time because when you go to a conference, for instance, and you want to share some ideas and you want to you know, interact with other people, that is useful. I believe that is useful. Um, it is also part of my job, so I'm probably biased. But, um, but not every conference is going to be useful for you. So you got to ask yourself, like, am, I, am, I making, am I making a good use of my time? Is this something that is going to really help me out in projects that I'm, I'm working on and in my own growth. And, and you'll realize, you'll soon realize that not every conference is gonna be useful for you. And 
if you still feel like you want to go there, uh, you should probably ask yourself why you want to be there. I've talked to many people in conferences, and I've heard many different reasons of why people attend to conferences. And there's one that really like, you know, like knocked me off, I guess. Um, and it was a, I was talking to this guy, and, and at some point I was like, you know, I've not attended all the PyCons, um, or, or even the PyCon in LA. I missed that one last year. Not because I didn't thought it was useful, it's because you know, I had um, other commitments, but but I was talking to this guy, and you know, like, why, why, do, you, why do you want to go to PyCon every year? You, you're telling me that for you to prepare a talk is actually very hard, and it takes a lot of time for you from your work, and it's very stressful, and you know, you as, because of the way you are, and not for everyone talking in public speaking is easy. So, and and the motivation was, you know, I go to PyCon every year because I don't want to be forgotten. And it's like, you know, is is that really something that that is true, you know, like, are we really afraid to be forgotten in a community? And is not being part of that community or not being remembered as part of that community something that uh, should affect the way we, uh, we choose the conferences that we attend? So that is, there is definitely one question that you gotta ask yourself. So why do you wanna attend that conference? Why do you wanna be part of that specific community? Is that community giving you something back, right? And the same thing applies to many other things that we do every day and like you know like you, you, one of the reasons I you know other guys says like, you know why you do you attend PyCon is says well because it is cool you know it's a cool conference and and you know I want to I want to I wanna hang out with this, uh, with these other guys and I want to hang out with the cool people that are in the Python community and you know again is cool the right answer here or are we trying to do something useful and contribute something back to the community. So for me, attending a conference at least is, you know, I go to a conference and I want to. I don't want to some. I don't want to only get something out of the conference. I also want to give something back to the conference because that's fine. There, you know, I'm going to use my time the best way possible. And the same thing, like I said, the same thing applies to anything else in in, in our industry and, and every interaction that we have online. Um, for example, it's like people talk about diversity a lot. You know, why are we talking about diversity? Are we talking about diversity because it is cool to talk about diversity or because it is a real problem that we need to solve? Because there's people that are actually talking about diversity because it is a real problem and they are doing something about it. They want to solve it. And there's other people that are talking about diversity just because it is cool. And because, you know, like since other people, since these cool people are talking about diversity, I feel like I should talk about diversity as well. Uh, which is probably not the right, you know, motivation behind it. It's like, Sure, thank you. Um, I think it's important that you're highlighting that there is a problem. Probably not for the right reasons, but you know, it is still it is still important. But again, you know, you gotta you gotta you gotta think very well how, how you interact with uh, with people online. You know, even how you pick projects online. Um, so how do you pick the projects that you want to contribute to? Do you pick the projects because they are popular, or because they are useful for your your own use case? Uh, both both. Answers are, are actually good, I guess. Um, if you pick a project because it's popular and you want to learn from it and you want to, you know, improve the project, I guess it is it is okay. But if you pick it because it's popular and again, like you want to be cool there, uh, you're wasting your time. You're not you're not using your time the right way, and you're not going to learn much about it. So we got to be smart about you know how we interact with other people online and why we want to do the stuff that we want to do, because it is very easy to become. Um, cranky um, on the internet and you know like try to try to do stuff just because other people are doing it and not because it's really useful for uh, the greater good if you want to call it that way and and as I'm saying this I also want to say like you should always uh, one way to be smart about the about how you invest your time and how you interact with other people is it is it is great if you assume good faith about other people, right? Which is kind of like weird because I'm you know I'm kind of like ranting right now about you know how people interact online, and but it is essential for you to assume uh, good faith about other people online. So you can tell people how you can tell people how to behave. You cannot tell people how to think, right? And I I do realize that telling you that you should assume good faith is me telling you how you should think. So it is really your choice to do it or not. But I'm telling you, like in my experience, assuming good faith about people has helped me a lot on not wasting my time trying to think how these other people would like to, you know, fuck me over uh, on the internet because you know like, I want to contribute to this project and this this person is gonna, you know, 
is submitting this patch and I'm pretty sure this person just wants to, you know, submit it, his or her own feature because, you know, they want to sell their product or they want to just change a project so that it is uh, beneficial for themselves. Uh, you know, that kind of thinking is, is very poisoning uh, when, when you're interacting with other communities online. So if you start assuming good faith about people, you just assume like if someone proposes a patch, you can just review the patch and say like, you know, your, your code looks good, it's probably not compliant with the project policies and uh, we might not accept your patch for this and these other reasons or you just accept the patch if you, uh, if you feel like that is cool. And someone that um, followed this pattern um, a lot was uh, Peter um, Hintgens. I always have a hard time pronouncing his last name. He's a, he was the author of Zero MQ. So he had this policy for Zero MQ where, you know, basically all the patches were accepted. You know, you, know, you propose your patch, it solves the problem. We're not gonna ask you whether, you know, like it is entirely useful for a project or not. As long as you're not breaking the project and your patch is actually doing something good for a project, we're just gonna merge it. There's no need to like over review your patch and try to, um, to come up with, you know, with all the motivations behind it and why you wanna do it. So assume good faith about people. Assume good faith about um, the humans that are right next to you because they're trying to also grow in the same community. And, and as you do that, you should also, it, was, it is interesting because there were some talks this morning uh, about mentoring, and that plays very well with what I wanted to say here, which is as you're interacting with this online society, with this online community, uh, you should always find yourself a mentor. And this is, this is the best way to grow, at least in my opinion. Um, there's a lot of resources online. There's a lot of you know, videos, YouTube, um, code that you can go and read, but no one will teach you better than someone else's experience. So nothing will teach you anything better than someone else's experience. So find yourself a mentor, even if that person doesn't know uh, that he or uh, she is your mentor, it's fine. I've done it like my entire career. You know, I start working on something. I find a person that I feel like it is, a, is the right role model for me at the time. Um, the person that I think is not this mother, but the person that has the most rational uh, way of thinking that I like and that I want to follow, and I use that as my role model. Um, it's, sometimes it is good to tell people, you know, reach out and say like, hey, you know what? I've, I've been trying to you know, copy, air quote, uh, the stuff that you do because I think it is great and I think you're a great person and I would like to learn more from you uh, to have time for me. Uh, but sometimes it's just fine to also not say anything. Like you just copy what other people do and you try to grow along with us, with those guys. And it's like, it's been my, it's something I've done my entire career basically, um, since pretty much my entire career has been uh, working on, on open source. So find yourself a mentor, find yourself someone that is a role model. Don't stick to that person forever because you'll grow. And whenever you grow, it is time for you to change your, uh, your mentor and it's time for you to just pick someone else and, and keep moving forward. Um, make sure that that mentor will take you down the path that you really want to go down to. And as soon as you start, not necessarily disagreeing, but as soon as you start feeling like you've learned what you needed to learn from this person, just pick another mentor. You can have multiple mentors if you want. But the key part here, the key thing that I want to mention is that you should follow someone um, because there's people that have gone through the stuff that you wanna go through already. So there's people that have had experiences in those paths and you, you know, you're gonna save a lot of time by following what these people do rather than just going against them or trying to come up with uh, different ways of doing stuff. Uh, which is not to say that experimentation is bad or that you shouldn't trust your God and try to, um, to do something different. What I'm saying is, copy the things that, are, or learn the things from this person, from these mentors, learn the things that you think are useful for you and let the, and let the rest just like be um, in itself. You don't, you don't really need to follow exactly what uh, the, the stuff that other people do. And you, you know, as, 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 you, as you follow these, uh, these mentors, um, there's also another key thing that you, you want to do for yourself and it is building your own confidence um, there's a lot of, and we go back to the title of the talk, you know, like don't try to look smart, 
Um, be smart about yourself. And the best thing you can do to be smart is be honest with yourself. If you try to fool yourself, you're just gonna waste more time, right? So just be honest with yourself and uh, recognize your limitations, recognize the stuff that you're not uh, very good at and that you want to improve and build your own confidence. Because if you don't trust yourself, if you don't trust your own um, knowledge and, and the stuff that you know that you know, and then you're not gonna get really far and let's not even talk about imposter syndrome and you know all these you know syndromes that we know that are real and that are a problem. Um, but I want to focus on the fact that you know assuming you're not having any of those problems, assuming that you're not uh, that you don't have any imposter syndrome or you know other uh, kind of like self-esteem issues. Like I, I want you to always remember that trusting yourself and trusting the stuff that you know is the best thing you can do. Because that is the only way that you're going to push yourself forward and you're going to push yourself into something new and you're going to try to uh, do stuff that you've not done before. And that's how you're going to get to failure, which is awesome, by the way. If you don't fail, if, I mean, if things go smoothly your entire life, your life is going to be like really fucking boring. Uh, and, you know, like there's this. You know, I would like to have, you know, one of those Amazon's buttons to, you know, buy food, like, really quick. I don't the dash button, uh, just to, like, just fuck something over. You know, like, you know, when stuff are starting to go smoothly for me, I want to have that button. It's like, just break something. Because, you know, stuff starting, you know, your life, your life becomes, like, more and more, like, monotonic. And, you know, stuff keeps being the same. So I have this urge to just break something when stuff starts going smoothly. I want, I want, I want something to just go bad. Uh, hopefully not horribly bad, but just bad enough to make it fun. Um, because failure, failure, failure teaches you many things. And, and when you learn something, when you know how to do something, it becomes mechanic, right? You know how to do it. You're not, unless you're like falling asleep, you're probably not going to fail at it if you've done that task like a gazillion of time already. So when you build confidence on yourself and the stuff that you know, you're going to try to do something new. And whenever you start doing something new is when you're, uh, you get closer and closer to failing at doing that stuff that is new to you. Um, so you get a whole, st a whole you know, set of new stuff there. Right? You get to pick a new mentor when you push yourself to do something new because you want to learn it. You want to know how to, uh, how to progress. Uh, you get to fail because you don't know the material. You don't know how to do it. And as you fail, you're going to learn as well. And hopefully you'll have this mentor that either explicitly or implicitly um, is going to teach you something. And, and as you fail and you know, as you fail and you learn how to overcome those failures and overcome those, those things that you don't know, you're going to increase the, the trust on yourself. You're going to increase the confidence uh, on yourself, which is, again, critical. You've got to be super careful, though, because it is like the line between being confident and trusting ourselves and being a fucking arrogant guy is very, very thin. So as soon as you cross on the other side, You'll become the, the person that people kind of like think is cool because do cool stuff, but no one wants to talk to. Because every, every time you talk to that person, you're just gonna, they're so over themselves that it is, it is just annoying as hell to just talk to that person. So remember, like the, the line between having self confidence or having self trust and being a fucking arrogant is like super, like super thin. And and again, like you gotta be honest with yourself. You gotta be honest with yourself. You gotta know that uh, you're human, right? And we have emotions. We suffer. We make mistakes. And if you accept that, uh, you're gonna keep yourself honest, and you're gonna do self introspection more often, which is something that I really recommend as well. So don't try to fool people by acting online. It's like, it's like people that wake up in the morning, go put makeup on, and then take the selfie and put it on Instagram. It's like, sure, because you wake up like that every day, right? It's like, screw you. So it's the same thing, you know, when you go on Twitter, it's like, my life is awesome. I just like, I just deployed a gazillion of notes and I didn't have to do anything. You know, like, I don't have a pager. Well, I have one, so what? You know, like, don't try to be someone that you're not. And and keep yourself honest. Try to introspect and be honest about your failures and be honest about the stuff that you don't know how to do. And 
And the reason I'm saying this is because when you do that, you're gonna start asking for feedback to other people because you know that you're not perfect, you're not that you're human, and you're not, you know that you make mistakes. So you go to other people and you ask for feedback. I do this very often. I, I've, done it, I've done it in different ways, you know? I have my manager, so I, I'm very straight with my managers. I, sometimes I just pick up the phone and it's like, tell me. It's just like, be brutally honest, I can take it, right? That is one way. The other way is you know, if you work on an online community, it's like write an anonymous like Google form and share it with the people that you think are gonna be honest with you and say like, you know, I had like these like three questions form uh, once and um, I don't even know why I'm not looking if I'm not using the slides. Uh, so um, I had this, I had the, uh, this form with three questions once and, and I just shared it with like a set of like 10 people or more and said so like, you know, sent an email and said, I want your feedback. And the questions were something like, you know, how is it to work with me? You know, what, is, what are the good things that you think I have and what are the bad things that you think I have? You know, tell me, like, I'm, I can take it. You know, like, I've, I probably <laughs> overestimated myself a little bit there, but yeah, some feedback came in, I processed it. It took me some time for a couple of them, but, um, but it, was, it was good. It was, it was super useful for me. And one of the guys actually came back to me and, and said, since it was anonymous, and the guy kind of like hated me. So, I, so the thing is, I, I tried to send a form to not only people that I liked, but people that I didn't have good interactions with. Because the people that you, didn't have, uh, that you don't have good interactions with are probably the ones that are gonna be more honest with you, especially if it is anonymous. Um, so I, 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 I reached out to these guys, and one of them actually reached out to me and said, I'm not gonna fill that form, I wanna talk to you over beer. And that conversation went south, but uh, the point is, is like you get, you get honest feedback, and that is what you want, right? You want, you want to know how you're doing. You're not, not because you want to know how, how good you're doing, which is great. You know, sometimes it's good to get um, good feedback and say, you know, you, you, you're doing great. It's awesome to talk to you. It's awesome to work with you. But you want to know the stuff that you're not doing great. Um, and this is part of being, being smart, right? Um, you know, it, it all comes down to how can I improve myself and be useful for the rest of the community and the rest of the industry? And the best way you can do that is, you know, try to improve yourself, try to be honest with yourself, and try to um, increase your knowledge and share it with other people. So if you if you if you pick mentors in your in your daily uh, in a daily basis and you try to learn from other people, uh, you should know that other people might be doing the same thing with you, right? So. And I'm not gonna give you, you know, the parenthood talk here and say, you know, like live your life as an example to others because you know you're all grown ups and you should know that. But the point is, be open to mentor other people. I guess that's what I want to say. Right? So people want to learn. You have stuff that you've lived. It's part of being confident with yourself. If you have self confidence and you trust that you, there's things that you know and that other people could learn from you then be open to share those things. Um, you can start like writing blog posts, doing videos, doing talks, um, or just being open and say, like, hey, if you wanna talk to me, just come over, I'm, I'm happy to share my thoughts. Um, I've, done that, I've done that even in, within, um, within Red Hat. Um, so I've sent emails to the entire engineering team saying, you know, like, I've been here for this amount of time. I know stuff about this and this and that. Um, if you wanna talk to me, this is my number, just call me, or ping me on IRC. Like, I'm, I'm open to have conversations um, on conferences, on, you know, bars, uh, although the bars ones would always, like, end up in drunk people. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, you know, the thing is that you gotta be open to, um, to share the stuff that you know, because trust yourself, you know stuff, right? You know, you have knowledge that other people uh, can, can learn from, so you wanna share it for sure. And uh, how much time do we have? Because I can talk for hours. Uh, two or three minutes. <laughs> okay, I guess um, I'll, I'll just close it here and I'll, I'll open it for questions because I really want to talk to you and I want you to talk to me. So what about you guys raise your hands and start asking questions about you know, our industry and how to interact with other people, et cetera, et cetera. There's one. Um, you know, your talk applies very well, I think, for the British or American culture. 
but uh, usually in Italy and in smaller companies or in southern Italy, failure is not the best way to learn new things, but it's a stain on your name that lasts forever. Right. So when you try to talk with uh, either CEO or people that usually do not uh, handle well failures because there is money involved, or people that are learning and are shy for personal or cultural reason, how do you help them overcome these problem, problems? You, are, you mean how do you help CEOs to overcome this problem? How do you help people that had failed to overcome Different points, problems? both cases. Okay, so the best way to, I believe, at least in my experience, um, I don't want to say the best way because that's, that's probably extreme, but in my opinion, um, one way to help people that have failed, um, not talking about CEOs here, so like people that are working, I was going to say that doing the hard work, but uh, working and, and failing, like probably causing some losses, is to first and foremost acknowledge that we are all humans, uh, we screw up, and help this person to understand that as well. Uh, because when, when you fail, you always forget that. Well, at least that happens to me, you know, you fail, you just lost a million dollars in this thing and you're like, oh, damn it, you know, like, why? And then you're trying to say, like, it's like, you know, like, if, if only I would have done this, the, you know, in a different way, this wouldn't have happened, right? So this person probably needs someone that, you know, comes over and says, like, you know what, you did fuck it up, it's fine. Uh, we did lose, uh, we did lose like a million dollars. It is not fine, but uh, we'll we'll get over it, I guess. If you ever can get over losing a million dollars, but um, uh, but you get my point, right? So I guess the thing is that you know going over and saying you're fired, you just made us lose a million dollars is like it's not gonna solve the problem. You're not gonna get the million dollars back, right? You just lost it. So the best thing you can do is is try to learn from the mistake as a company and help this person to learn from the mistake as an individual um, member of the team and the company. And, and you know, for the CEO, it's like, man, I don't know, that's chill, I guess. <laughs> you just lost a million dollars. <laughs> um, no, I mean, seriously, I do understand the cultural gap. And there's a huge cultural gap. As, an, as, an, as someone that has worked in Italian companies, uh, I, I do know that. And it is hard, it's just gonna take time, but you cannot expect companies to change if no one in the company is changing as well, right? So you as an engineer or as a member of your company, you are as responsible for changing the company as the CEO is. And this is something that um, you, know, you see in other companies because they have understood this already. And so you as an engineer can affect the future of the company as much as the CEO can do it, right? If, uh, let's talk about, I work on OpenStack, right? So let's talk about OpenStack. If I, if I screw OpenStack up, you know, like, there's no product, there's nothing that we're gonna sell, right? So I can actually affect the future of the company I work for. Um, so the sooner, the sooner you understand this, the, the better it'll be, and the, you know, the sooner you'll be able to cause an impact in, the, in your own company so that your CEO will understand this as well. So I guess what I'm saying is like, it is too easy to say like, hey, my CEO doesn't act like that, my CEO doesn't have that kind of culture, so I, there's nothing I can do. That is, it is too easy to say, right? But you are as responsible for the company you work for as your CEO is, so. And I'm not saying like you have to feel the company that you, that you work for as your own. This is something that happens for some people and some other people just don't feel comfortable with that. But if you're serving the company, either as an external consultant or whatever, again, you're serving the company. Try to make it better. If you need to talk to your CEO and tell the CEO, hey man, you know what? You're acting like an old dude and you're not just like, that thing it doesn't work anymore. So you are responsible for that, just do it. Any other questions? Come on, there's one. I'm gonna pay for beers if you ask questions. And I'm, there's a pie beer tonight. I I have budget, so. Hi. <laughs> oh, this is on camera. Damn it. <laughs> so how how do you choose a great mentor? Because maybe you be a fun, a great developer, a great friend, but they're not good at mentoring. How do you choose them? Right. So, um, don't. I guess my first advice is don't pick the cool guy. 
Because the cool guys, I'm not saying the cool guys are not smart. I'm just saying the cool guy is probably uh, busy being cool, um, <laughs> I guess. Just, you pick the, pro <clears throat> excuse me, you pick a mentor based on the project that you're working on, right? Um, so if I'm working, I don't know, on building OpenStack, you know, I'm not gonna pick a mentor from a, that, you know, works on a programming language. Mostly because like, I can pick a mentor there as a, you know, as a, as an open source engineer, you know, someone that has some influence in communities and all that. But the, persons, the, the, the person or the people that I'm gonna interact the most with are within the community that I'm part of. So you wanna pick definitely a mentor that is within the community that, that you're part of. And then comes the question of, you know, like among all these people, that hopefully there are many people that you can pick from. So among all these people, you know, who's the right person for me? Um, pick someone that shares your views, not only about the project, uh, you know, the future of the project is changeable. Like you, it is fine to disagree with your mentor, right? Uh, whether that person knows that it, uh, he or she is your mentor or not. It is fine to disagree with that person, and you should disagree with your mentor. Um, so it doesn't really matter the future of the project. It is an important topic, but it's not the main topic. The main topic that you want to keep in mind is like, is this person, are these, is the point of view or are the points of view of this person compliant with the way I see the world? and the way I want to, you know, my career to look like. You know, the way I've done it in the past is, sometimes I talk to people and I see someone doing something and I say like, I wanna get there, right? So I'm just probably gonna follow this guy or at least learn from his history or her history. And this is what I've done in the past and it's worked for me, you know, like this person came from, you know, working on this project, passed to that project and ended up in this position here, which I, I actually like, so I wanna end up there, so I'm just gonna, Try to build up all the path, like this person's path on you know the, what took him or her there, so I can kind of like not necessarily repeat, but at least I can run from his history or her history, and I can try to uh, duplicate that in my own way on my own project. So try to find the person that is compliant with the way you think and the way and, and where you want to get at. Thank you, but th that sounds more like an idol than a mentor. They should be aware they are your, they're mentoring you. Um, Otherwise, it's more like a, something. Well, not really an idol. Um, so I, an idol, to, for me, an idol is someone that you admire, but you don't feel like you can be like that person. That is an idol for me. That is some, someone, it is, it is a superhero that you know it exists. Well, no, superheroes are like unicorns, they don't exist. <laughs> but you, there's this person that you kind of like admire, but you don't feel like you can get there. When you pick a mentor, it's because you can learn from that person and you know that even if you don't end up in the same place, you go, you're gonna learn the same um, skill set as this person and you're gonna like probably reach the same level or not. But it really depends on, how, on where you wanna get at, you know? So again, be honest with yourself and pick based on that. More questions? Any other question? Beers. <laughs> or any non-alcoholic drink if you're, if you're not into alcohol. Damn it, beers have lost their power. Okay. You are convincing. <laughs> it's not the beer. Oh, it's not the beer? Oh, sorry. oh well, I can pay for Coca Cola. Yeah. Cool. Um, you talked about reflection a little bit, about self awareness and stuff like that. So, how do you reflect? You got two minutes. Oh, okay. Uh, I can speak faster. How do I reflect? I go through stuff that I've done, especially the ones that I believe I've done. Uh, bad, you know, try not to beat myself up too much because I'll end up in an, this infinite loop of beating myself up into to the ground where I'm not ever gonna come out from. So what I do is like, you know, like this, these are my tasks or these are the things that I, I set myself up to uh, for the next six months, you know, how much have I done uh, of that? How much have I learned? And the stuff that I've not learned, then you go and say like, you know, why, why haven't I learned this? And so you start from your goal and you go down from there or is that, this is what worked for me. You go down from your goal and you start reaching the point where you know you failed at. And that's where you stop and say like, okay, you know, I've done this in the wrong way. Uh, do I know why? If I don't know why, do I know someone that can tell me why? And that's when you reach out either to your mentor or other people in your community and you write forms like the one I wrote and say like, you know, like, you know how, how is it to work with me? You know, why do you think I didn't you know, reach my goal here? And, don't be so strict with yourself, I think. I'm, I'm terrible at agile, I'm terrible at organizing my work, I'm terrible at having a schedule, you know, like, I'm, my memory is horrible. So I try not to be extremely strict to myself. I know where I wanna 
be at. And, and that's why I reflect you know, so often and try to introspect on the stuff that I've not done very well. Um, so I kind of like remind myself where I want to be at and, and, and try to improve. So just start from your goal, go down, uh, identify the stuff that have not worked for you, try to know why they didn't work for you. If you don't find the answer, uh, ping someone that might know the answer for you and until you find it. Um, don't, don't, don't leave um, unknowns, stay unknowns, right? Try to always answer the stuff that you don't know and that you know that you've not done right because that's where you're gonna learn. And if you don't answer those, uh, you're missing out on, on, on your own growth. Thank you very much, Flavio. Cheers.